I'm here in Helsinki about to give a presentation on the future of the auto industry for the equivalent of the Automobile Association in the UK. And the truth is this, that while we can talk about flying cars and all kinds of exotic things like that, whatever happens will happen relatively slowly for one simple reason. Here in this country, for every new car that's sold, six old cars change hands from one person to another. The average car is kept for 20 years or more. So even if today, in this city of Helsinki, every new vehicle is a pure electric power, which it won't be, but even if that was the case, it would take 20 to 30 years, at least, for all of the petrol and diesel fleet to disappear. And that's the same that applies to, for example, robot-driven cars, because even if every new car by 2025 was automatically driven with no driver's seat at all, it would still take, as I say, two decades or more for the process of transformation to be complete. The fact is that there are some constraints imposed by the laws of physics, which mean that every car is designed in the same wind tunnel, subject to the same air forces on the airframe, which is why the outside cars look relatively the same, and human beings are constant. At the end of the day, you have to fit this audience into seats. And if you're going to have two rows of seats, there are only certain ways in which you can design seats that fit the human frame. And that means that the insider cars will continue to look fairly similar as well. Now, despite that, we will see gigantic changes in technology, particularly in how these cars are powered with electric power taking the biggest share of new vehicles over the next 50 years, followed by hydrogen, especially for public vehicles, buses and things like that.